a race fan who likes to enjoy his comfort out here at the National Open. We have a selection of radical Camaros here uh, mixed in with a few junior dragsters. launches these cars do anymore. Not very impressive. All right, we're out here at the National Open here at PIR, for the International Raceway. This is the uh, second year they've done this in the last 25 years. Behind me you can hear the roar. Now that may not mean too much to uh, most viewers, but to uh, those of us old time drag racers who remember the good old days that used to happen out here over 25 years ago, this race has a little more significance. It's the only time this year that we'll have cars out here with their open headers because the facility has uh, obtained the noise variance to allow them to race because it was that very noise that shut down big time drag racing in this town all those years ago. And in place of big time drag racing, a lucrative IndyCar racing series came into here. And they utilized the noise variant so that they could run their event. Well, now IndyCar has gone away from Portland, and that noise variant has picked up the drag racers again, finally. Mark Canyon, we can measure with a red light. Gee, 001. However, there is plenty of room in the pits and in the bleachers as well. It would be real nice if someone would pick up this three-day event and promote it to a larger audience. Uh, I remember the races of old. We used to have the fox hunt drags here. All kinds of other races. Big name racing personalities were here. Don Garlish, Jungle Jim, all of them used to come here. Back then, the pits, the parking lots, and the bleachers were packed. And there were a lot of cars like that around in the day. Not too many Vegas around anymore. That's a cool publication there. One good looking Mustang GT. Fast, too. We have the Ford contingent over here. You can see the timer readout on the Bridgestone Bridge over here. Place at about the eighth mile mark or so. That bridge was put in to accommodate the uh, IndyCar races here. But this bridge placed a rather severe limitation on running the top fuel dragsters out here. There was a time when uh, they used to experience blowovers where those dragsters would stand straight up in the air and uh, flying into that bridge would have been quite the catastrophe. Speaking of dragsters, here's a few of the uh, dragster contingent out here at the races today. In addition, we see some of the regulars that uh, run the Wednesday night series out here. Here we have uh, an old Ford Pinto. You don't see a lot of them anymore either out on the streets, that's for sure. That's one of the things that's cool about this kind of racing. Uh, we keep these old cars alive. And that's a good reason to be keeping racing around. Uh, granted, we turn them into monsters, but hey, it's all cool. The junior dragsters are out in force again this year. One thing we see a lot of is a lot of these little rigs. So mom and pop can follow their kids around up and down the track. Here we have a drag dog staying comfortable in the shade. 
over here in the apparel section. It looks like they are making uh, little flags. Uh, you can have your car on a little flag. I would love to see a car like this with the original Ram Air hood and uh, rear spoiler from the original 69 Trans Am. That would be a way cool ride. Okay, the Comcast Dragster. This is one clean machine. A lot of chrome and polish there. A lot of these dragsters are pitted down here past the bridge. Nice, cool, shady area to be. And it is a nice day today. Huh, I love it. And this right here epitomizes the uh, lifestyle of racing for the family. You got the motor home, the awning up, relaxing in the chairs. Keeps them coming back. This Camaro here has the look of a streetcar, but the times of the pro DT car. Here's a car that would probably run well into the nines. Uh, they're running the eighth mile out here this weekend. They're trying to set some national records in the eighth mile category for the Division Six NHRA drivers, if they can do it. The old graphics from days of yore. And, of course, the flames that never die. How many Mavericks do you see anymore? There he is, sticking his mufflers in the trunk there. The Chevelle is a serious contender. He's got a special rig there to keep his rear slicks cooled down. You say you like decals? Well, check this out. Mm, what's this fellow brewing up? These folks like to swing. Taking on Andy Morris. Morris in the far lane. The yeah, not too many folks in these bleachers. I think I remember this Nova from last year. And maybe even uh, might have seen this in my uh, arm drop drags coverage from Woodburn, Oregon this year. If I'm not mistaken, that is a candy apple paint job on that Camaro. It looks bitchin'. Barracuda. Purple ice, they call that car. Ah, that might be an ice addict of a different flavor. back in time. Looks like we have a pair of 68 Camaros on the line. Let's watch them take it all the way down. How hot is it out here? Throttle stops, delay boxes, and trance brakes. None of that stuff was around back when the last big NHRA race was run down here. All I can say is thank God for innovative guys like Rich Christensen, who brings all out racing back to the mean streets for us. If Rich were to come to this track with a Pink's all-out race, this place would be absolutely jam-packed. Okay, folks, and there you have it. A little cake. 